As you can see here, the Packers D could use some reinforcements. The main cause for concern is cornerback Jair Alexander, who did not participate in practice on Wednesday with his status for Green Bay's trip to Cincy. Uh, okay, we keep hearing it. The Cowboys defense was actually better when Smith was off the field, supposedly. Lewis, do you see Smith making the Packers defense better? Yeah, I do, because I think he adds uh, speed, play playmaking ability inside, especially in nickel sub situations where him and Devondre Campbell will be able to team up on the second level and be a good combination when you're talking about taking care of running back, running backs and tight ends and pass coverage. Is he a, an all pro? No. Is he someone who is an absolute difference maker of the variety that you see some of the top notch inside linebackers who are three down players? You know, the kind of difference that those guys make? No, but he does bring them a wealth of experience. He brings them leadership. He's going to be someone who is a galvanizing force, I would assume, in the defensive meeting room. And he's someone who Matt LaFleur knows from his days back at Notre Dame, which is also very, very important. Look, this team, Green Bay, make a run. And the defense is starting to improve. They need to continue to add playmakers. Heck, they still need a playmaker really at corner. That's why Stephon Gilmore was someone yes. who you thought would be naturally connected to this football team. So this is a big addition for them. They need to get him on the field ASAP. Yes, Gilmore made so much sense on the Packers, Jeff, because the whole they're picking on King, right? And Jair is hurt. And if you put Gilmore, it didn't happen. However, with, in, with Rodgers increasingly looking like himself, Jeff, is there a sense that they are the most complete team or the team to beat? Or what, what are you hearing about the Packers in the NFC? Certainly. I mean, I, I think that once we were able to kind of dismiss that week one game as something of uh, the anomaly, which is difficult to do when it's the first body of work that you see in the regular season when they took that beating from the Saints, you start to realize that, yes, this is the team that we expected them to be when we talked about them in the preseason. Um, and, and when you do... Well, what's interesting is when the Packers start to make the additions like this one with Jalen uh, that Aaron Rodgers lamented the organization about when it came to not making moves like this to improve the roster. I think this could go a long way in, in many ways. You know, it's important to remember, by the way, with Jalen and Stefan, we talked about those two guys comparing. Jalen's situation is very different coming out of Dallas. The reason that they were willing to cut him is his contract was guaranteed for injury next year. So if he got hurt, na hurt now, the Cowboys were on the hook next year. So the, they're basically paying most of his salary. So this is a bargain deal for the Packers right now with Jalen. So pretty good acquisition on their part. I still have not heard a good enough explanation as to why you just release Jalen Smith in the middle. I, I don't know. To my eye, it looks like he can play, but okay. Lewis, um, the, Packers got, the, Packers got, I don't know, the Packers got the Bengals this week. Bengals have a good record. Should they be on upset alert? Joe Burrow got a little magic. Should they be on upset alert? Absolutely. Look, because I think it's because when you're talking about Joe Burrow and you and you see just how in command this young man is, not just of this football team, Max, I mean of the offense, but this football team overall, how he has the respect of the coaching staff to the degree where he can tell them exactly what he wants on the football field and make suggestions as to, look, this is how I think we're going to best move the football in this particular moment. That just t makes everyone else go, this is the guy, this is the guy who can get it done against you know, whoever we're playing against in the biggest of moments. And this is a guy who, look, they, they have some very, very nice weapons on the perimeter. When we're talking about Green Bay's defense and then being suspect to the pass, especially if Jair is banged up, we know that they have had some other issues. As far as Kevin King, you know, Eric Stokes has been good, but he's been inconsistent, just what you would expect as a rookie. That sets up well for a guy like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd to sit there and go crazy, especially if they set up in empty and just kind of spread things out and really just start throwing the ball all over the yard, provided they can they can uh, protect him. So, yeah, this could become a shootout. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is on the other side of the field, and this is a guy who, look, we, we already know what Aaron can, do, Aaron can do at a moment's notice. But Joe Burrow and the Bengals are not the same old Bengals anymore because of Joe Burrow, and I think that is pretty cool. That's good for the NFL, and that's darn good for Cincinnati and that city. How many times, including this season and Dak in the playoffs, have we seen a quarterback go up against Rodgers? Oh, he would have won if only Rodgers didn't make that suit. Joe Burrow <laughs> yeah. seems to me the kind yeah. of guy who may have the ball in his, in his hands at the end of the game, and he makes the amazing play. Just gives you that feeling. It's going to be fun to watch Sunday. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.